The book we're going to talk about today is called In Ascension by Martin McInnes, and this was long listed for the Booker Prize for 2023. I wasn't sure that I would get into this book because it seemed a little scientific and very in-depth. It's a fiction book, but it reads like non-fiction, and it's absolutely fascinating. I was captivated from the start. It's scientific, it's poetic, it's eloquent, yet it's not overwhelming. I never had a hard time understanding what was going on in the book. So it follows this character, Lei, and she grew up in the Netherlands in Rotterdam, and from a young age, she was fascinated with the water and microbiology. For her 11th birthday, she got a microscope, and it talks a little bit about her childhood growing up with her sister. She had a younger sister named Helena, and growing up, their parents, her mom was really smart, worked in mathematics at a local university, and their father worked for this place called the Water Shopping, which basically took care of the land to make sure it wouldn't flood and stuff such as that. And just a little bit about their upbringing with their parents. And unfortunately, the father would beat the daughter. He seemed to take it out more on the older one than the younger one. The younger one didn't get it as bad. So this kind of has a traumatic effect on Leia all throughout her life, even if she doesn't want to admit it. And so eventually, when she's of age, she goes to college and is able to get away and not be there anymore, not have to deal with that, her father's anger and all of that. So she goes to college to study ecology and microbiology and at age 23 she ends up going to the Azores Islands so that she can go to these mountain lakes and study phytoplankton. And while some of this may sound boring, there's not a boring moment in this book. The way it's written, like I said, it's poetic, but it's scientific at the same time and just the way it's written is so captivating. And so she goes and she does this and after doing this for, you know, her studies to graduate, she ends up getting on this boat and the boat is called the Endeavor. And the boat's gonna go out to the San Andreas Reef for like five days and do some surveying of stuff and whatnot. And so they get out to this area and they apparently have discovered a thermal vent that no one's ever found before. And what's weird about it is that apparently it's like three times the depth of the Mariana Trench. So this is like a historic discovery and they don't know if the readings are right or what's going on and all that. And eventually they decide they're going to dive above this thermal vent. And they also have uh, ROVs, which are remote operated vehicles that are going to go down. Spent a lot of money on those. There's this lady named Amy and she was in responsible for making them and designing them. So she's on this crew. I think there's like four or five people that end up doing this dive and going down. And so for the first dive, they all go down. And apparently it's this crazy experience, but no one quite remembers it. And they all come back and they're all like kind of delirious and people though they're like dizzy and throwing up and somewhat hallucinogenic. And they are kind of like down for a few days until they come back to being normal. And so after that, they go back in crazy, right? But that's all, all of those people could think about was going back in. That's all they wanted to do. And so they get back in and it's not, that doesn't happen again. They're fine this time around. But something weird happened there. So they went there and they're collecting data and samples and stuff of what's coming up from the vent and they send these subs down and then at some point they lose the sub and so they have to abandon their mission but they do still have some samples collected and whatnot and so that's part of the first part of the book with the ocean and all of that and how lay her path and life career go. And so after this later in life, you know, she made a connection with that woman, Amy, who had designed the subs. And through that, she ends up getting this job for this place called i which is the Institute for Coordinated Research in Space. It's out in California. So she comes to the U.S. to go there and she is going to study basically algae and growing it as a crop for food on like a space mission. They just discovered this new propulsion system where they can go faster in space. So they're developing the technology to go faster and further. And they're going to go to like a, have a mission, go to like one of Saturn's moons or something like that. So she goes there to develop these algae crops that'll be used for food in space. So she starts doing that and developing this. And at some point they move up her clearance and start telling her more. 
They start telling her about this other possible space planet or entity that they find called Detura, about where the mission's actually going. It's not going to go to Saturn's moons. As you get more into it, it gets stranger and she gets more involved. And then the person in charge of a lot of stuff, her name's Uriah. And Uriah at some point is like, hey, we need someone who's going to train. We have three different groups and the mission is actually going to go to this Detura. They got a message back from one of our probes that have been long gone for years and years and years. There's some really strange stuff. They think it's contact, possibly has to do with aliens or not. We don't know. Some sort of entity. And the story is all crazy and it's beautiful and sad and emotional. And so there's three groups and she is put in this group with these other two astronauts and they want to just train them as a backup. There's not really a, much of a chance they're going to go to space because there's two other groups that are supposed to go over them. They have a group in Beijing and they also have a group in, was it Kazakhstan or I'm not sure where the second group was. I think it was like Kazakhstan or something like that. And then the third group is California. And they're like the last group. They're like the group that's probably never, ever going to go, right? What, what do you think happens? You think those other two groups get compromised? I don't know what happens. <laughs> Does she go to space? Who knows? So you have a story of scientific discovery and of uh, just all these interesting qualities with the mystery of what came from that thermal vent and what was that. And that also ties into their mission in space. Us. Some of the sample material that was gathered from that thermal vent, they end up using in the algae that they're growing for the crop that's going to feed them while they're on this space mission. And it's wildly beautiful. It's emotional. It's just so well written. I've read a few Booker Prize winners in the past, and a lot of times I end up not liking them. I don't know why. Sometimes they just, you know, they're... I'm not trying to call myself dumb. I wouldn't even say they were over my head. I just didn't enjoy them. I don't know what it was, but this one is a winner. I freaking loved it. And you know why? Probably because I love things that have to do with the ocean and water. And I do read a lot of stuff like that. And it, but a big chunk of it is outer space. And I, as I said, it was a uh, fiction that read like nonfiction and it was so flipping good. I loved it so much. It was so good. And it's probably why I read after it too. I tried to pick up two other books and I DNF them both because I hated them. One, I thought the, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what they are because I don't like to talk bad about books. I'm going to talk a little bit bad about them without telling you what they are. One of them, the dialogue was just awful and juvenile. And I was like, this is horrible. <laughs> so I stopped reading it. And the other one I just, I wasn't vibing with, I guess. I don't know. I love reading a book that resonates so much, but at the same time, I feel like this happens every time when I try to read something right after it. It makes either the books kind of like seem dumb or just not, I don't know. Maybe my brain's in a different space. It just doesn't want to uh, handle it. So I gotta come back to it later. I don't know, but fantastic book. I would highly recommend it if you like books that have to do with the ocean and space and are kind of scientific. I thought it was completely understandable. I never felt overwhelmed. I didn't feel like anything was over my head. Nothing was boring either. Cause sometimes that stuff can just be like, mundane and boring. I guess if you're just listing facts, but as I said, it's poetic and it's just such luscious writing. That's right, luscious. It's very descriptive. It's very tangible. It's very beautiful. The ebb and flow of it, the story. Awesome. If you like books that have to do with the ocean and marine biology, the next video coming up will be about that. So stick around, check it out. And if you had fun hanging out today, hit that subscribe button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.